Hey guys, uh, Brian here with Better Chess Training. And in today's video, I wanted to show you uh, some end game positions or some end game training that uh, I do occasionally, as well as just talk in general about uh, some ideas on how to study the end game. Now, uh, this position and the positions that we're going to look at today are uh, come from the end game training mode on chesstempo.com, which I'll put in the description. Um, they are puzzles, typically a five piece, um, four or five piece uh, uh, end games, and typically you are trying to uh, win or draw the position. Um, actually, I think I'm, they might be wins in all cases, but uh, some some of these times. Um, what I like about about it is that you can take the theory and the the concepts that you learn from your endgame, and that's the way I suggest you learn it, and then you can try apply them in positions that you haven't seen before. Uh, before you tackle this, I do recommend that you build up a base of chess endgame knowledge, and I have a couple suggestions for you. One would be to use books, and I have a couple recommendations. Uh, one, oh, upside down, one is Chess Endings, Explain Move by Move by Jeremy Silman, and is just as it sounds, uh, very basic fundamental endgames, Explain Move by Move. So this would be great for uh, beginning players. Uh, the other beginning book I would recommend is, uh, is uh, um, Pandolfini's Endgame Course, and that has uh, about 300 positions to study and it kind of goes uh, position by position. And I like that one as well. That was actually the first uh, end game book that I studied. Uh, and then I would also recommend getting some type of end game encyclopedia. And there's two choices that I typically recommend. Uh, one I have with me, one is um, Miller and Lamprecht's Fundamental Chess Endings. It's a uh, fairly thick book, but it has um, pretty much all the end game positions you'll need to study. So you can look, look them up after your games. Um, and I recommend that. And the other one, which is fairly similar and also highly recommended actually by several masters I know, is Dabretsky's Endgame Manual. So get one of those two. I don't think you need to get both right away uh, unless you just love the endgames, which is good. Um, the other thing, if you do like chess videos, I highly recommend uh, Grandmaster Nigel Davies' um, Tiger Chess program. And he has an end game course in there, which is uh, goes from begin, you know, very fundamental end games and moves onward, as well as a strategy course. And then you can also get uh, there's some analysis training as well as an opening course that you can get. Uh, I'm a student of uh, Grandmaster Nigel Davies. Uh, just as uh, full disclosure, I guess I, I really enjoy working with him, and I think his course is excellent. So uh, those are some of the resources to learn the fundamental concepts of the end game. And then once you're building that up or as you're building that up, you could practice here. So let's do a couple positions. I've never seen these before, so uh, hopefully um, I'll do okay. Uh, let's just jump right in. And I uh, there's two end game modes in chess tempo. There's uh, theory mode and there's practice mode. Uh, with theory mode, you need to get the optimum move for each one, otherwise you get the problem wrong. So it's very difficult. And I wouldn't suggest that unless you really want to focus on your calculation and or if you're just a very strong player and you want to really get precise with your end games. I like practice mode, which gives you a little more leeway. It doesn't have to be the exact best move as long as if it's a winning end game that you are you're not making any moves that allow your opponent to draw. And uh, but it does penalize you for making suboptimum moves. So uh, let's go ahead and try that here today. And if you want to do this along with me, what I would suggest, try to come up with a plan, not just single moves, because uh, that's really where uh, this endgame practice will help you, is to help understand the theory and the, the concepts and then coming up with that plan, and then the moves just fall into place. So here, uh, in this position, we have a rook and a pawn versus a bishop. Obviously, it's a winning position for white, but we have to make sure that we don't mess it up. A uh, couple things here. My first thought is to maybe sacrifice this bishop. Uh, as I look at it quickly, though, uh, bishop takes e7, king takes e7. If I make a move like king to g6, uh, I just know from my positions that it very quickly uh, it, this, this is drawn because after king to f8, I will not be able to force this rook's pawn in. So I have to look at something else. Um, the other thought here would be to maybe play something. Now, one thing to know here, so this is one of the things here, uh, is that in this particular position, all I need is a rook and king if I can get rid of this bishop to win. So I can actually use the sac pawn, pawn too to sacrifice that maybe or trade it for the bishop. 
Um, so I can win either way, so that's good to know. Uh, what if I play something like h6? What would he do? Okay, uh, well, he might play king to g8, in which case I win by just taking the bishop. Or he could maybe do something like bishop to uh, f8, and if I play uh, h7, he plays his bishop here to, um, to g7. So can I do anything about that? After h6, if he plays his bishop to f8, well, I can just play rook to f8 check, and that forces his um, king back. And then I have a couple options, I think. I can actually play something like h7 check to deflect this king from the bishop. Okay, I have to be careful not to stalemate the king, but it's a little harder to do that with the rook. And then if he plays his, um, after rook to f8 check, if he tries to stay in contact here, or I'm sorry, if he, if he moves his um, king here to g8, which again is the only move he can do that doesn't lose the, um, I'm sorry, that doesn't lose the bishop, then I can maybe consider if I play that h7 check, which I think would be the best move, and then he plays something like, say, king to g7, then I can go ahead and sacrifice the rook here because my pawn is one away from winning. So I think that's the best plan, and I think that works. So I'm going to go ahead and play h6. Okay, and the computer, I, I don't have it on your screen, but uh, the computer's indicated that is the best move. And so I will go ahead with the plan, rook to f6, check. Now, it says that it takes one move longer than the ideal. However, in th this is why I like this practice mode. I'm really looking for uh, practical training. I'm looking uh, not necessarily for the very, very best move, but just the, an efficient way to win. So here I can play, well, let's look. If I play h7 now, he's he can play um, his bishop here. So can I move my uh, king in to g6? Then I think he's just lost. If he plays bishop to g7, I'll just take it. So king to g6, I think, is the best move. And actually, uh, that is incorrect. It draws. So it will be good to see why it draws. And uh, what we can do is uh, let's go back. Let's see here. And so up to here, I was uh, good. And... Um, Okay, so let's just look at this. After um, king to g6, then, ah, okay, well, he sacrifices the bishop, and then he wins the, the rook here. So that's why. Well, let's see what we could have done in this position. Okay, um, the most efficient, it is saying, is to um, either play, move the king to e5, which doesn't, totally makes sense to me, or uh, to move the rook, which makes a lot more sense here. So um, let's go ahead and move our rook here to a6, and then he's forced to um, sacrifice it. Let's just take a look here. If he play, tries to make his um, king move back here, then we can actually play rook to a7 check. And then if he blocks here, we can just play h7, okay? Okay, our next position here, uh, we have um, an interesting one, two rooks against a rook. So this should be a fairly easy win, and I think the idea here will be to find the, uh, just to make sure that I am not going to get uh, stalemated, or not going to stalemate my king here. So um, starting out in check, which actually is um, relatively, uh, it's actually a new way to begin the position. So a couple ideas here. One would be to approach this rook, and then the other one would be to get behind my rooks here, and then try to force a um, get over to this side here, which I think I kind of like here. So I'm going to go ahead and scooch on over, and the it's indicating that I am making the best moves. And here at this point, um, I'm going to, uh, so phase one is complete. My king, he's going to try to get some king uh, checks in on here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to force his king uh, to this back rank. And what I'd love to do, of course, is get another rook over there, but uh, it's not going to happen. So what I'm going to actually do is, um, let's see here. I want to get my king over, but if he checks me here, I won't be able to. So... Um, 
what I want to do is get my king over here and then over here somehow but uh, I'm not sure that that's necessarily the best way to do things. Um, the other way is to, after um, he checks me, move here and then get the king over that way. So that's another way of doing it. Um, and maybe what I could do here is threaten checkmate here. Just trying to find the best way to uh, to do this. And then that, ke that could keep his uh, rook there. Let's try that. Okay, he's going to check me. So this indicates that, that was the best move. And I think all I have to do here is um, he's going to have to trade one of these. I'm going to scooch over here. It says it takes four moves longer. but uh, And here I got the problem correct. So uh, again, try to come up with a plan, not just single moves, okay? And try to do it that way. Let's try one more. Okay, uh, this is, um, looks like a fairly simple problem, but I want to make sure uh, we do it properly. And in this case, we've got an extra rook. So some of these problems are going, because what it does is, I, I believe what happened is a chess engine um, goes through a bunch of, these are all from actual games. So, so it goes through and finds these end games. And so a couple things with this. First off, I, I think it's, you have to understand, some of these are going to be really, really easy, but you still need to, that's where, and if there are easy problems and you know you can't lose it, you, you just want to be as precise as possible to help you with your thought process and help you with your focus and concentration. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and this is just my opinion, is don't overdo these. I do a few of them at a time to kind of practice your technique, but I think time spent uh, studying the end game as well as other aspects of chess, chess um, it's better used to spread it out a little. So don't don't spend all of your time doing these endgames. I would say the same thing about any aspect of chess, just because there is so much. Uh, chess is such a complex game to, to try to understand. Okay, well, a couple things here. Because, um, you know, the, the nature of this position, um, we're going to try to be as efficient as possible. And I think the way to do that would actually be to try to um, checkmate the king. And I can actually do that with the rook and the king itself. But I'm going to just walk my king over here and plan on taking this pawn, and then I can go ahead and advance it. But uh, here it says it takes two moves longer to mate. Uh, I'm actually going to push that king back over there. And, um, well, I have a decision to make. I could just go ahead and go for the back rank mate, or I can go and win this pawn and mate him that way. And I think I'm going to do that just to... There's a pawn there for some reason, so I'm just going to uh, do it that way. I'm going to bring my rook over here, and then I'm going to do that. And um, actually, in this position, it's going to give me the pass, And uh, but it was not the most efficient way. So let's go ahead and take a look at what, what they would have done. And again, I've only got went three extra moves, so it's not like I um, went too far uh, off course here, but uh, it wasn't a perfect score. So um, let's see here. The there is a mate in four. It says so, and I think it's based on the fact that this pawn is blocking and this queen is, or this pawn is restricting its movement, and this pawn is blocking the king. So um, the most efficient way would be king to e6, and then from here rook to c7, and then we should know what to do from here, right? Uh, and then checkmate that way. So uh, the way I did it is definitely winning. Um, if you have a lot of time in a game, uh, you might want to try to find these wins, but uh, definitely a pattern to learn. But uh, I think we were able to, um, you know, we got that correct in any case. Let's try, you know what, because that was so quick, let's try one more. Okay, well, here's an interesting problem. Uh, Black would love to escort these pawns over. And with the queen here, we just got there, we just got to make sure we don't have any situations where, um, white can get stalemated. So let's take a look here. And, or where black can, can get stalemated. Um, let's see. Now, he, if he pushes, so how should we begin this? One thought is to bring the king in. And then if he tries to, uh, if he pushes this pawn, well, we can look at, let's see here. Ah, I see. Well, one of the difficulties here is that um, he can try to bring his king in as well. 
um, this checking help. I think it does. Uh, you can check him here, which either forces him to b4 or to a5. No matter what he does, I can actually, well, actually, depending on what he does, I can actually put my queen here on a2, which stops this problem from advancing, and then I could bring my king in to support whatever he does. Um, if he goes to a5, for example, um, actually, if he goes to a5, I could even do something like um, queen to b3. So I think the first, the best move here would be to check him. Let's see if that's correct. Uh, it says it takes two moves longer to mate. Um, that's okay. You move to a5. And actually here, I can go ahead and, again, in this case, I just want to make sure I don't lose. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move my queen right here. Stops him from advancing. And then I can um, go ahead and take this pawn. Bring my king up. And take this pawn. And then um, should be easy to win from here. Of course, he's making me work a little. I'm going to bring my queen in. Just going to restrict his space here. And then I'm going to cut him off and just bring my king in. Okay. Very basic. And checkmate. Okay. So. Uh, again, this was not the, it says I made five extra moves than I had to, so I can go back and look here. And uh, instead of queen to c2, it's telling me, and actually this was my second alternative here, was uh, king to c5, and I guess the whole point here is that it's a maiden two here. Queen takes b5 check, and because the uh, pawn restricts the movement, queen to b4 mate. Okay, so uh, I'm... Not wanting to make excuses, but because I'm making this video, I didn't want to. I guess if I would have looked for a minute or two each, I probably could have found those mates. Uh, but the point is that uh, this training gives you a little extra practice in these simple endgames. And as you can imagine, the more of these that you do, uh, the, the easier it's going to be to think of these. So even when you're in the more complex endgames with more pawns and with other pieces, you can look for those ways to simplify to get to these types of positions. And with this type of practice, on uh, chess tempo, uh, you can be confident that you'll be able to win any of those positions that, uh, that are winnable uh, with few pieces on the boards. But uh, just to sum up, before you get into this a lot, which I do recommend you do at some point, uh, make sure you're building up that chess knowledge either through a book, uh, like some of the books I've recommended, or through um, some type of systematic course uh, like Nigel Davies' Tiger Chess. Okay, I'll talk to you soon, and I hope you enjoyed. Hey guys! Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please press the like button. And for those of you who are new to this channel, uh, I try to put uh, two videos up a week. Sometimes I put in an extra video. And uh, my main goal is to help you to get better at chess. And I do that with a few types of videos. So uh, check out my channel. And if you enjoy, please subscribe for future updates. Otherwise, I uh, hope to see you soon and good luck with your chess.